Our uh, featured speaker today has been speaking professionally for over 30 years. And she's earned her certified speaking professional designation from the National Speakers Association. She's spoken at TEDx Manitoba in 2013. She's been nominated for induction into the Canadian Speakers Hall of Fame. She graduates honors student of distinction with a Bachelor of Management, Human Resources Management Specialty. She's a lifelong knowledge seeker, and she has a topic today, the neuroscience of resilient leadership. Would you please give a very warm welcome to Derry Latimer. Thank you so much. Really, really honored to be here with you. So there's this interesting phenomenon with leadership. If you just look at your computer screen, you've got sort of a vertical axis and an or horizontal axis there. If you imagined a graph, on the vertical, if we were looking at that being uh, importance going from low to high, and if you looked on the horizontal axis and we went from lower level position in an organization, in other words, entry level, let's say, all the way up through to the executive level, here's what we find. As you grow, as you arise and go to higher levels and study higher levels of leadership in organizations, your technical skills become less important. The line would be going down. An executive's technical skills are not as important. However, what we find the line that's going up that becomes more important as you move through your career from entry level all the way up to the executive level of an organization is self and social awareness. And I think you would all know this from anything you've ever learned or talked about with regard to leadership. Well, what's also true, there's another line that goes down as you go higher in the organization, and that is your capacity for self and social awareness. And there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. This is only one of them. So I'm going to invite you all, if you could, to just take anything other than the device you need to be in this Zoom call and just put it out of your sight line. And that's what I've done. I've just put it underneath my desk. There's power in that. In fact, lots of the research in neuroscience is showing that, you know, just like secondhand smoke, which we all know about is not good for us. There's also something called secondhand distraction. And so if you're in a meeting with a whole bunch of people and your phone's on the table, it's not only distracting your brain, it's distracting the brains of everybody else in the room. Small things make a big difference. So I'm going to share with you five key principles real quick, because this is going to be a quick presentation, a quick chat I'm having with you in the 20 minutes. Five key principles for resilient leadership from a neuroscience perspective. And the first is, you can't be here if you're there. You have a couple of major networks. You have a lot going on in your brain, but a couple of major networks. Now, one of them is called the default narrative network. I'm sure you've heard of this. I call it the voice in my head. You know you have a voice in your head, right? Who has more than one? Is it just me? Yeah, okay, there you go. So you know you have a voice in your head. Well, there's another network. And by the way, that voice is just blah, 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 right? Nattering on and on and on to you all day long. What's really scary about the voice in your head is it's often taking you away from what you really want in your life. In fact, it can be filled with negativity and judgment toward yourself, potentially other people. But there's another network and it's called the direct experience network. The direct experience network is alive and well when you are fully present and in the moment. So we're gonna do a little experiential exercise right now. I'm gonna invite you in a couple of moments to close your eyes. If you don't wish to do that, that is okay. You don't have to, it's not required. Or if you wanna turn your camera off for this part, you can do that too, as long as you turn it on. Cause I love seeing all your faces. I'm looking at all of you. Uh, but here's what I'm gonna invite you to do in a moment is just to close your eyes. And so if you are comfortable to do that, please do that with me now. This is gonna be really quick. And just now, as you have closed your eyes and we're all doing this together, I just want to invite you to tune in to your breath. And that just means just notice your breath. Breath going in, breath going out, just noticing. You don't need to change your breath at all. 
And if you find you are distracted by noises in the environment or by thoughts, just gently come back to your breath. Now, in just the last few seconds that we're sharing this moment of presence of mindfulness of meditation, if you like, together, I invite you to reflect on why you are here. Why are you here on this Zoom call? Why are you here in this chosen profession? Why are you here on this earth? Why are you here? Okay, you can just sort of gently open your eyes, move around in your chair if you like and come on back so we have these two networks you can't be here if you're there simply says that if you are stuck in the voice in your head you are not fully present and when you are fully present you are not stuck in the voice in your head you know that meditators have different brains than non-meditators can I just see a show of hands? Because I can see all. Is it, are there some people who are either regular meditators or who have tried it? Just give me a little wave, a little finger. Love it. So if you haven't tried it before, you just did a little mini meditation. Now, what I love about moments of presence or mini meditations like that is because just imagine how our world could be if we all, before we entered a meeting at work, we just had a moment of presence. We just had a moment of reminding ourselves why we're, why we're gonna be entering that meeting. What are we there for? Why are we there? Imagine what it'd be like as you arrive back in your home or if you're already working at home, if, as you leave your office in your home to go interact with whoever else might be out there. Imagine what it would be like for you to just take a moment and remember why you're there. You see, I think if you're like me, and I think you are in some ways, I think a lot of times we are places, but we're not really there. We're in a meeting thinking of our grocery list or the problem that we couldn't quite solve before we entered the meeting and so on and so on. I remember when I first started learning about meditation and mindfulness, I thought to myself, I wonder when I was raising my kids, if I was ever really there, you know? Like, was I ever there? I mean, I was there, but I don't think I was really there. So remember, your brain can only be in one place at a time. Learn to go back and forth. That's what a practice of meditation can do for you. All right, the next principle is, if you want to do more, do less. Don't you just love these? Yeah. So this is another reflection on the importance of mindfulness. You see, we're doers, aren't we? We have like 25 devices on at the same time. And we think we can multitask. Well, guess what? From a brain perspective, you can't. I mean, you physically can. But from a brain perspective, you can't. And in fact, we're living in a time of continuous partial attention, which is causing constant mental exhaustion. And if you are the leader who is living in that space, imagine what that's doing to the rest of your organization. Because the language from 40 years ago in leadership is true today. People follow the leader. So to do more, do less, take more time for presence and really tune in to what's going on for you and those around you. And take breaks. I mean, isn't this a novel concept? Your brain's capacity to problem solve, to be really involved in what you're doing, 90 minutes max, you need a break. And a break actually means get up and go somewhere else, whether that's outside, whether that's you know into a different room. Do something different. Don't take your devices with you. See what happens. See how powerful your brain becomes. You know, this prefrontal cortex, this part of your brain that's so yummy because it does all that problem solving and decision making and analysis, it is really small 
So it gets exhausted very quickly. Here's another thing that moments of mindfulness will do to you. It will allow you to tune into your story. Because you know you're telling yourself a story, right? All the time, every moment of every day. You're telling yourself a story about me, about coming on this call, about your life, about people in your life. And sometimes that story's not working for you. That's the voice, remember? But if you're not aware of it, it continues to control you. Presence allows you to tune into the story. And here's what I invite people always to do, is to choose another story if that one's not working for you. Just choose another one. Like I made up a story about all of you before I came here. My story was, you are so excited for this event. This is the biggest thing that's happened to you, like really your whole life. You can't wait to come and meet all these people here. No, it wasn't quite that. But it was that you're really happy to be here. You really want to take away one thing that will help your life. That's a story I made up about all of you. It could have made up a different story. Oh my gosh, another one of those sessions where people just click on a button, you know, they're trying to kill some time in the work day and don't really care. What, you know, I could have made up that story, but that would affect me, right? Which would ultimately affect you. Choose a story that works for you and notice what happens. All right, next one. Do dope and avoid court. Come on, you got to admit that's a good one, right? So when we're talking about the brain, you know I'm not talking about this dope, which is now legal, of course, but I'm talking about dopamine. So the neurotransmitter of desire. We want you to have that flowing through your brain all day long, hopefully. You have dopamine flowing through your brain when you are moving toward what you want. Now, remember your brain, you've heard all this stuff. We were chased by tigers, blah, 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 blah. It's all true. That's all true that our brain is focused on threats. But when you are moving toward what you want, not away from a threat, your brain is in a positive state. Move toward, continuing to think about what you want and move toward. Dopamine, is, your brain is filled with that. You've heard of other good chemicals like serotonin and oxytocin, the hug drug, you know, wonderful. That They feel good for a reason because they're good for your brain, good nourishment. The avoid court, you know what that is too. You've heard of that, cortisol. Too much of that flowing through your brain and body, your blood system, that it's, it's gonna kill you. And you know that. So be aware of your distress signals. Your body is communicating with you all the time and we have all worked for leaders and it's not only leaders but that's what we're talking about today right we've all worked for leaders who you knew they were excreting cortisol you know into the room right it was written li literally all over their face and you as well when you have cortisol pumping through your system it's not only hurting you it's hurting everyone around you because they're feeling it and again, I don't have to explain that to you because you know that from your life experience. So do dope, avoid court. Know what your distress signals are and then pull out a resilience strategy. Because I believe resilience is not only about overcoming obstacles and being able to do that, but also about knowing what your resources can be. New resources. Hopefully there's a few of them in this presentation for you. All right, let's go to the next one. And the next one is show me you love me. And maybe even better, tell me you love me. There is one thing that you can do as a leader that will make all of those good chemicals like dopamine, like serotonin, like oxytocin, testosterone, happiness, go up in the brains of the people around you and make stress, cortisol go down. There's one thing. And I bet if we turned the mics on, you would all know, but we're not going to. You can say it in your head. And that one thing is positive feedback, appreciation. I have never met one human being ever in the thousands of people I've met in the 30 years I've been doing this that said, oh no, Jerry, I get way too much positive feedback. You know, stop it already. Yeah, I get too much appreciation. Never one person. If you do nothing else, but let people in your life know 
what you appreciate about them, if you do nothing else, you will completely change the world. Because remember, your brain is looking for what's wrong. And you need to do something to see what's right. You need to make an effort to see what's right. You need to look for what's right and then tell people. Tell them you love them. Next, if I am faux, then you'll be slow. Come on, you have to admit, this is pretty cool. Here's what that's referring to. Your brain, like a way in toward or negative and positive, Remember, your brain can only be in one place at a time. Your brain is also assessing people. Like when you go into the breakout rooms or when you're thinking about who's this person with the weird hair who's speaking today, your brain is saying, is this person friend or foe? Is this person with me or against me? Is this person I, someone I want to connect with or I don't want to connect with? Is this what person someone who wants to support me or wants to cut me down? Should I trust or not trust this person? Here's what I invite you to do. Just choose friend. Just decide that everyone you meet is your friend, that they have your best intentions at heart, that they want you to be successful and do well. Just choose that. Because when you look at people as your enemy, you will be less smart. When your brain is in a negative state, it shrinks your perspective. It's called tunnel vision. Because just like our ancestors, you're focused on the threat. And you can only see this much of what's possible. When you're in a positive state, your perspective is broadened. You have more information. You're quite literally smarter when you're in a positive state. Finally, I want to leave you with this. When I delivered my TED Talk uh, in 2013, 10 years ago, I just realized when Randy said that. I shared a story, which is really a, my backstory about why I do what I do. And I shared a story about the night I told my children this part of my life that they knew nothing about. They were eight and 11 at the time. And in my TED Talk, I shared how they taught me what I believe are cornerstones of leadership, of living a good life. They taught me to be curious, caring, and connected. If you as a leader are curious, caring, and connected with and about yourself, as well as others, the possibilities, I believe, are endless for what you can achieve as a leader. And I want to add one more C to that. And the next C I want to add is compassion. So this is a word we hear a lot now and lots of the writing on LinkedIn and other places, but I would like to add to it Start with self-compassion. You know, you're going to mess up as a leader. You're going to do some stuff that didn't work out so well as a parent, as a partner, as a friend. I just last night was on a Zoom call with some friends. And, you know, after I thought, oh, I think I talk too much, you know, uh, that sort of thing, right? You know, you're going to do stuff that, darn, I wish I hadn't done that thing. Or I wish I'd, you know, handled it this way. This is my... Uh, I talk lots in my sessions about having an anchor point uh, for different emotional states. This is my hand over heart is my anchor point for self-compassion. Here are the three pillars, according to Kristen Neff, who is a pioneer of mindful self-compassion. The three pillars are mindfulness, common humanity, and self-kindness. So what she says is first you have to know what emotional state you're in. What's what's happening here? Have I been triggered? Is something going on? And again, if I've messed up, what's where's that judgment coming from? Or what happened in that situation? So that's the mindfulness apart, which having a practice helps you to have. Common humanity is reminding yourself that other people struggle too. Other people are going through a tough time too, as well as you. And then self-kindness. So when I mess up and what I did last night after the call, I thought I talked too much and I didn't really listen to my friends. I just said, you know, Derry, you know, you were just excited <laughs> to see them. And, you know, other people sometimes over talk and I'm pretty sure that she did last time. And it's okay, you know. Now there's been, there've been bigger things than talking too much on a Zoom call. 
losing my noodle with my kids, you know, anyone else, just me arriving late for something that I committed to be early to and so on. And just give yourself that moment of self-compassion. Talk to yourself like you talk to someone you love. And I think leaders, if we do that, we will be resilient and we'll be modeling for the people around us how to do that as well. Thank you all so much for coming on this call. Thank you. It was just an honor to be here with you. Well, thank you so much, Derry, for doing such a superb presentation. Thank you for accepting this in the first place, because as one of the world's most qualified professional speakers, I guess I was kind of shooting a little high when I asked you, but I'm so glad you did. I just knew you were well-known and highly regarded. So I'm very grateful that you've accepted our offer to be our featured speaker today. But you can see that the virtual background has changed. Effectively, what that is, is a doubling up of a certificate of appreciation that we have for you. Thank you. We also have a printed version, which because you and I live in the same city, hopefully we'll be able to arrange to connect and I can meet you in person and I'll hand you the printed version. Meanwhile, we'll of course post this on social media. And by the way, I'd like to mention to everyone, uh, we're going to have some questions and answers with Derry right now. But I wanted to mention that uh, when I initially asked Derry, I thought to myself, I'll bet you she could be a record setter. Now, she only got second place in 10 years, but that's pretty darn good when you say, yeehaw. <laughs> Remember, sometimes I'll silver sometimes <laughs> silver and gold are only one one hundredth of a second apart, right? So uh, I have the highest quality of humans. See, that's <laughs> how. So congratulations, Derry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, yes, so we definitely have uh, Q&A. Um, and I, I just want to mention a couple things if I could. And hopefully now is OK, Randy, for that. But uh, for people who do live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, or anywhere in Manitoba, or if you want to fly in for this event, uh, my speaking association is holding uh, an event on May 26th at the Leaf. And if you haven't been to the Leaf in Assiniboine Park, amazing. Uh, it is a half day motivation and leadership event. And uh, I, I'm going, I would like to, so it's just on Eventbrite. You, would, you could just search for Elevate MB. Elevate MB is the event. We'd like to offer you 25% off, uh, and we'll have that for the next three days for you. We might extend it for a couple of days, but we're hoping you will go look at the event and uh, come and join us at the LEAF on May 26th in the morning. And the code that you enter on uh, Eventbrite is BIZ, B-I-Z, for this event, uh, in honor of this event. And for people who are not in Winnipeg, Manitoba, because I know not everyone's going to fly in. Come on, you could, from Cincinnati, Ohio, or, you know, California. But uh, no, of course, uh, you might not be able to do that. But what I want to say is that I am a person who's put on this earth to uh, help people wherever I can. So the offer I have to... Well, to everyone really is, uh, but for sure, the people who aren't uh, able to come to this event in May, reach out to me. You know who, where I am on LinkedIn. My email is just dairy at dairylatimer.com. Reach out to me if you have any questions or any information you would like, or you'd like to read something that I've written, um, articles on uh, leadership and the neuroscience of leadership and on resilience. And I, I will share with you video clips, all, you know, really tell me what you want and I'll uh, make that available for you. So thank you all again. So yes, go with, uh, if there are questions. So does anyone have questions or comments for Derry? And maybe I'll just start off with Ron Owen, our founder, and just ask what your thoughts and reactions and questions might be. Well, Derry, thank you very, very much. Yeah, I, you know, what I, I really appreciate is that you've, I think you've helped us all refocus on why we are all here. We get eyes off ourselves and get them onto other people. And uh, I love to be able to compliment other people. I don't always do it because I get jealous every now and again of what they're doing. <laughs> but um, I, I just believe that everyone needs that that compliment, that, hey, this is the good thing. You know, if you've ever taken a Dale Carnegie course, um, you're fully aware that the best thing to do is to remember someone's name and then find out what they're good at. So focus on that. And I love doing that. And I think what you've done here is you've helped us all refocus and remember that we're not alone. We've got people out there that are going through some crap and just a kind word. 
I think I, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much for, for sowing that seed into our life. It was spectacular, and I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate that. Do you have any other questions or comments? Okay, Jennifer. I see a hand right. I see Jennifer's hand because she's on my screen. Hi, Derry um, and everyone. I just, I work so in the same circle as you. I loved hearing what you talked about. But I, while you work on the side of the positive, I work on the side of the negative. So I would love to talk to you at some point about the neuroscience of leadership failure and the, the neuroscience of when leaderships are in leaders or and people are full of cortisol and people that aren't trustworthy and how do you navigate that with your using your your brain science so at some point i'll reach out to you because i think we have very complementary approaches and i i loved hearing what you had to say and it was a great reminder to me about the importance of the positive i especially think one of the most important things that you said is the idea that we've got to make the effort because our brain automatically goes negative. We have to consciously, mindfully make the effort to turn to the positive. It's the healthiest thing for the brain and the body and society. So yeah, I, I don't have a question because it's too complicated for right now. I'm about to run out of time. Uh, I just wanted to thank you and tell you I will reach out. Awesome. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. By the way, Jennifer Fraser will be one of our featured speakers in the future. And so we'll look forward to the results <laughs> of your collaboration, as well as what you came to the table with, with your PhD in uh, the areas that you work in. So that's awesome. So thank you very much for joining us today. I met so many great new people. I'm so happy. Uh, and uh, thank you for being uh, knocking it out of the park with the marked attending numbers. Uh, we had never had anybody in the 600s before. So I know for sure this is the second best ever. So congratulations, Derry. Thank you so much for accepting our offer to uh, have you as our featured speaker. It was a real pleasure. Learned lots. And uh, thank you so much, for everyone, for joining us. And I do hope you'll uh, join us for future events. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Derry. You're so welcome. Thanks for Thanks, joining Thanks, guys. Us. That was awesome. Take hey, Derry, you're 100% correct. I was fully enthusiastic to be here today. And like, this is the best part of my day. Oh, that's all. Thank you, Janet. Lovely. Thank you. Imagined it. <laughs> Thanks for uh, being a great co-host, uh, Ron. I appreciate that. Thanks for being our speaker, Derry. Thank you, uh, Thank Janet you. and Chris, uh, for attending. And uh, we'll see you all in our uh, future tra uh, travels, or whether it be virtual yeah. or for real. Exactly. Take care. Awesome. Okay. All right. Take care, Ron and uh, Randy. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thank take care. Have yourselves a great yes. day. Thanks. Yeah. Good to see you all. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Terry. Take care.